Forest Beaver by Marcus Pfister. The first rays of the sun shone brightly on the beaver's pond, but Father Beaver, Mother Beaver, and their son Boris were already awake. Mother and Father Beaver had been working busily for weeks, building a dam to make the stream into a pond. Then they built their lodge in the middle of the pond. Boris was just old enough to help his parents with their work. Come along, Boris. We're going to cut a tree down today, said Father Beaver. Then we'll use its branches to mend the weak places in the dam. So the beavers left their lodge through its underwater doorway and swam to the bank. Father Beaver chose a good tree on the edge of the wood and set to work with his sharp teeth. You have a go at that bush over there, Boris, he said. We could use a few more twigs for our lodge. Boris scuttled eagerly over to the bush and tried pulling it up by the roots. He tugged and tugged until he was red in the face. I'd try my teeth if I were you. Father Beaver advised him, smiling. And Boris had very soon gnawed through the branches of the bush. He gathered them together and dragged them to the bank. He swam over to the lodge with his bundle of sticks and added them to the roof. Then he splashed slowly back. As soon as Boris was in the wood again, he heard his father's warning cry. Watch out, Boris, the tree's falling. Boris just had time to jump aside. He was trembling all over. Father Beaver was shaken too. That was a close thing, he said. Go and play until you've recovered from the shock, Boris. We can work on the dam this afternoon. Back in the cool water, Boris soon forgot his fright. He liked to swim better than anything else in the world. He swam right across the pond until he suddenly collided with something. He turned over in surprise. Who are you? he asked. I'm Freddy Frog. Hey, you're swimming around this pond as if you owned it. Boris laughed. Well, in a way, the pond really does belong to us beavers. After all, we made it by building our dam. Still, I'm sorry I bumped into you. Come on, let's have a game. Freddy sat on a floating tree trunk and let Boris push him across the pond. In the afternoon, Freddy went to the dam with Boris. I don't think I can be much help, he said but I can keep your company. Mother and Father Beaver had dragged a whole lot of branches from the tree they had felled over to the dam. There's a very weak spot there, Boris. Help me get this branch firmly anchored, said his father. However, just as Boris was going to put the branch in place, the water of the pond burst through the dam. A big jet of water swept Boris down to the bed of the stream. Boris was so startled that he even forgot to swim, but Freddy came to the rescue. With a mighty leap, he jumped down to the bottom of the stream and hauled the bewildered Boris back to the bank. Father Beaver, did
did an emergency repair job on the dam, and Mother Beaver said, I think we've done enough work for today, don't you, Boris? Come and have supper with us, Freddy. Freddy was happy to accept the invitation. He swam off to the beaver's lodge with his three new friends. He thought it was really exciting to dive down to the underwater doorway and then come up into the lodge through the long passages. Father Beaver, Boris, and Freddy were sitting comfortably in a circle when Mother Beaver brought supper in. All of a sudden, Freddy turned greener than ever. You're not going to eat those damp roots and bits of wet bark, are you? he asked. The beaver stared at him in surprise. Why, we always eat roots and bark. Oh, well, never mind, croaked the frog. I'll just go and catch myself a fly to eat. Boris went out with Freddy and climbed on the roof of the lodge. Good luck, he called after Freddy. See you tomorrow, croaked Freddy happily, swimming to the bank. There was once a beaver who was so busy that he didn't always think things through. The beaver's carelessness was becoming a problem. His dams leaked and he always made a mess of the forest. He left trees half chewed and worse, he felled more than he needed. Perhaps worst of all, the beaver went about his work with so little thought that a tree landed right on top of a bear. And once he even chewed a moose's leg, thinking it was a tree. The beaver was just that careless. It was only a matter of time before something went terribly wrong. Sure enough, one day the beaver was so busy chewing on a tree that he failed to notice it was falling in his direction. The beaver woke up in the hospital with a bent tail, two broken limbs, three cracked ribs, four big bruises, five sprained fingers, six twisted toes, seven little cuts, eight stinging scratches, nine sore muscles, and ten nasty slivers. He had spent his entire life chewing, swimming, and building. He had never sat still for a second. Now he could barely even scratch his nose. At first all the beaver could do was stare at the ceiling, but little by little he began to heal. With lots of rest, he regained his strength, and before too long he was trying out a pair of crutches. Eventually, the beaver was able to hobble over to the window. This was the first time he noticed his leaky dam, the mess of trees he had left half chewed, his friends' bandages, and a family of homeless birds. He realized he had a lot of work to do. The next day, the beaver embarked on a rigorous rehabilitation program. Did lots of yoga, he got back on his feet and lifted weights. While he was at it, the beaver caught up on some important reading and practiced saying, I'm sorry. Soon enough, he was ready to go home. Run for your lives! The beaver's friends were a little worried 
about his return to the forest, but despite their concerns, the beaver went straight to work. Hi, guys. Before the beaver started his first project, he did a full tree inspection, checked to see if there were any animals in harm's way, and carried a frightened caterpillar to safety. Then the beaver went ahead and built the family of homeless birds a new nest. Next, the beaver apologized to his friends for being careless and causing so much damage. Sorry, guys. To show that he meant it, he made the bear a vase for his den. Thank you. And he built a canoe for the moose. Apology accepted. The beaver's final task was to clean up the mess he had made in the forest. He hauled off the trees he had left half chewed took the broken branches to fix his leaky dam and planted saplings to replace the trees he had felled. With the forest back in order, everyone was happier, including the beaver. His work done, the beaver got to thinking about what he might do next. He came up with lots of ideas as he got ready for bed that night. Maybe he would take a course on dam building or take more maps. The beaver liked this idea best. Or start a band and go on tour. Being busy doing good work was exhausting. With a yawn, the beaver laid his head down on a soft bed of leaves and fell right to sleep. All that was left for the beaver to do was Five Busy Beavers by Stella Partenu Grasso. Five busy beavers building up a dam, closing off the river where the salmon swam, gnawing down trees and ferrying the logs, slapping on the mud that they gathered from the bog. Along came a muskrat who wanted to play, and one little beaver swam away. Four busy beavers chewing on some wood, chopping down trees as fast as they could. Poplars and willows, maple trees and beech. Searching through the forest, they found a bit of each. Along came a heron who wanted to play, and one little beaver scampered away. Along came some chorus frogs who wanted to play, and one little beaver frolicked away. Two busy beavers gathering mud and silt, diving to the riverbed until the dam was built patching up the holes and filling in the cracks, thumping their tails in a rhythm of smacks. Along came a turtle who wanted to play, and one little beaver waddled away. One busy beaver in the setting sun working very hard until the job was done, checking for leaks and tidying the sticks, shoring up the dam using all a beaver's tricks. Along came a firefly to light up the way, and one tired beaver paddled away.
Four busy beavers and their playful friends gathered at the lodge with a plan to make amends, stringing up flowers, making water lily pie, humming while they worked to make the time go by. Along came a beaver with weary eyes, who was greeted at the door with a big surprise. Life in a beaver pond. Beavers use rocks, branches, and mud to build dams that block rivers and create wetlands. Here, beaver parents teach their kids how to build cozy lodges and waterproof dams. The whole colony works together to keep the dam strong. The world's biggest beaver dam is in Wood Buffalo National Park in Alberta, Canada. It probably took about 25 years and the work of eight generations of beavers to get as big as it is. Sometimes a muskrat will sneak into a beaver lodge for a nap while the beavers are out. When the beavers come back to sleep, the muskrat darts away. Muskrats use cattails and grasses to make their own lodges called push-ups. Push-ups aren't as big or sturdy as beaver lodges, but they are cozy. The biggest heron in North America is the great blue heron. Herons like to live in large colonies. A single tree will hold many nests, sort of like an apartment building. Beaver ponds are the perfect nesting ground for these birds. The shallow waters attract fish, bugs, and small animals. When herons spot a tasty snack, they use their long beaks to quickly snatch it up. Male chorus frogs chirp loudly to attract females to shallow water. The canals beavers dig to transport logs back to their ponds are deep enough for the frogs to lay their eggs in, but too shallow shallow for any big fish that might want to eat them. To avoid predators, some chorus frogs can throw their voices to sound like they're calling from a different part of the pond. A Blanding's turtle is an endangered species in the United States. Its upturned mouth look like it's always smiling. It's shy, though. They like beaver ponds because they can dive in and hide in the mud for hours. They can also use their special hinge shells for hiding. The turtle can tuck in its head and feet and shut its shell up tightly until it's ready to come out. Fireflies can be found across the eastern United States, including near beaver ponds where the soil is moist and there's lots of tall grass to nest in. Fireflies are actually beetles. Their delicate wings tuck under a hard shell when they're nesting. There are over 2,000 different kinds of fireflies. Not all of them produce light. Those that do use their flashes to communicate with one another. Beavers by Kathleen Martin James. This wet furry animal is a beaver. What is it doing with all of these sticks? This beaver is building a house. A beaver house is called a lodge. A lodge is made of tree branches and mud. How do beavers build a lodge? First, beavers cut down trees with their long, sharp front teeth. What color are this beaver's teeth? This beaver is standing up on its back legs to chew a branch. Its wide, flat tail helps it balance. Next, beavers carry branches and mud with their small front feet. Beavers may build a lodge in a stream, river, or small lake. Sometimes beavers build a dam in the water. Water cannot flow past a dam. Water gets deeper on one side of a dam, making a beaver pond. Beavers build their lodge in the pond. Most of the lodge is above water. How do beavers get inside? The way into the lodge is underwater. Beavers are good swimmers. Their back feet are webbed. Animals with webbed feet have skin joining their toes. Webbed feet help beavers paddle in the water and swim quickly. 
When it swims, a beaver uses its tail to help it turn. How else do beavers use their tails? Beavers use their tails to stay safe from predators. Predators are animals that hunt and eat other animals. If a swimming beaver sees or smells a predator, it lifts its tail high up. What do you think the beaver will do next? Slap! The beaver hits the water with its tail. The loud noise tells other beavers that a predator is near. Beavers are not predators. They are herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants. These baby beavers are eating twigs and leaves. Babies drink milk from their mother when they are very young. Baby beavers are called kits. Kits can swim out of their lodge when they are a week old. Like all beavers, this kit can keep its eyes open underwater. Clear eyelids cover its eyes when it swims. This kit is tired of swimming. It rides on its mother's tail. This mother and kit are grooming. Grooming keeps fur neat and clean. Beavers comb their fur with their back feet. Beavers smooth their fur with oil from their bodies. This oil makes their fur waterproof. As a kit grows older, it learns to fix leaks in a dam. Soon the kit will be a super builder like its parents. Legend of the Beaver's Tale, told by Stephanie Shaw. Long ago, Beaver did not look like he does now. Yes, he was a chubby fellow, and yes, he had two very large front teeth, but his tail was not wide and flat. Beaver's tail was thick with silky fur. Look at my glorious tail, Beaver said to Bird. I'll bet you wish you had one like this, Bird said. Beaver, it is a fine tail, but truly all I wish for is a cozy nest for my family. Beaver ignored Bird. He fluffed and plumped his tail as Bird flew off to hunt for twigs and leaves. This tail is the tail to end all tails, Beaver said to Deer. I'll bet you wish you had one like this. Deer said, Beaver, it is a fine tail, but truly all I wish for is some tender grass for my family to eat. Beaver ignored Deer. He brushed his tail on one side and then the other as Deer left to forage for food. I'm just saying, said Beaver to Fish, this tail of mine is absolutely the most magnificent tail a creature could have. I'll bet you wish you had one like this. Fish leapt up from the water and said, Beaver, it is a fine tail, but truly all I wish for is calm and warm water to rest in. Beaver ignored Fish, and Fish struggled on through the icy water as Beaver looked at his own reflection. He turned round and round, trying to catch a glimpse of his glorious tail. Hmm, said Beaver, how rude. I think my friends are jealous of this beautiful tail of mine. He waddled off to gnaw on a log. Autumn turned to a shivery winter. Beaver lumbered through the woods and then began to have a good chew on the trunk of a large tree. Every now and then he would stop and run in circles around the trunk. In this way, he could chase his tail and give it yet another admiring look. Beaver was so caught up in this game, he did not notice the tree creaking and teetering back and forth as he chipped away at its base. 
Crash! Smash! Beaver's fluffy, beautiful, glorious tail was trapped beneath the massive fallen tree. Beaver tugged and pulled. When he finally got his tail out, it was no longer fluffy, beautiful, or glorious. Oh, my tail! Moaned Beaver, and he sat and cried himself into a huge puddle of salty tears. But no one heard his cries or came to comfort him. It was then. Beaver stopped crying for the loss of his glorious tail, that he cried harder and longer for the loss of his friends. As time passed, Beaver kept very busy to take his mind from his loneliness. Where he carefully felled trees, tender grass grew. Where he dragged the branches to the water, tiny leaves and twigs littered the forest floor. And where he built a dam, the water slowed and became warm. In the spring, the animals returned. They watched Beaver perfectly balance on his new tail as he chewed the tree bark. When he swam to the shore to greet them, his tail was a rudder guiding him straight and true. And when he wanted to make an announcement, he slapped the water, making a loud sound. "I am ashamed that I only talked about myself," said Beaver. "Your friendship is important to me. Please stay," Beaver said, "dear." You have made the grass plentiful for my family. You are a good friend. Of course, we will stay. And my family can nest with the twigs and leaves you have scattered," said Bird. "The dam you built slowed the water and made a pool," said Fish. "I can rest and be warm. Thank you, Beaver." "And that new tail of yours is amazing," said his friends. "We wish we had tails like that." "Thank you," said Beaver. He looked back at his tail. It was wide, flat, and furless. It really was quite glorious.